Okay, so yeah, I'm Chris Vio. Um, I'm working for Datapad. Last week I was still working for Datamir. So, uh, like I just changed some letters at the end of the data stuff, but. Um, yeah, I will talk about the D3 reusable API. I'm like a bunch of uh, people uh, over there, so I will try to stay very uh, high level and to give some kind of an introduction for maybe uh, these guys that will be uh, that will um, explain more deeply the technical part of the reusable API. Why do do I want to talk about it? It's because we are writing a small book about it. Uh, it's a book sprint. Uh, the concept of a book sprint is fairly, uh, it's fairly new to me. It's just that you try to write a book in a weekend, over the weekend. Uh, and I say mostly because, uh, of course, you have like a bit of pr pr preparation before and then a bit of uh, polishing after. So we are still uh, polishing it. But I think it's a very interesting challenge. Instead of like uh, working for four months, you basically work for a uh, weekend over like a Google uh, uh, Hangout and some, uh, some tools for uh, collaborative work. So this book sprint is really about the reusable API. And we wanted to focus on it because there are a lot of good resources for starting with D3. And uh, when I started with D3, uh, I felt that I was starting for a while. Like uh, after like a year, you still feel that you are starting with it. Uh, there's, there's a lot to uh, learn and a few resources that are for intermediate to advanced people. So we are writing this with, a, with Andrew, Ger, uh, Roland, and Troy. Uh, like one, one guy is from uh, uh, Austin, another from uh, London, another from, from uh, Amsterdam. So that was a, an interesting challenge. Uh, the state of the book right now, it's in uh, reviewing. So uh, it will be available at, uh, at, at somewhere in my computer, I suppose. So it will be available. Oh, I'm lost. Hey. What? OK, let's try it that way. It will be available here. So uh, this presentation will be available um, after the talk. So you will be able to click on all the links and, and to see uh, where it will be available with uh, Bleeding Edge Press. OK. There is kind of a mailing list where you can subscribe to have news when it will be ready. But that's not what I want to talk about, because it's, the book is just a pretext to um, work on the reusable API. So what is this reusable API? It started as mostly as um, the Mike Bostock's towards reusable charts. So it was a community effort to come up with a way to, to package charts that makes sense with D3. Um, so if you, if you read this blog post, you will have the essential part of how to package charts in the reusable API. So of course, that's well written. That's written by Mike Bostock. So why this API? Like, why do you, you want to use this API? Uh, with D3, you can find a lot of examples for standalone visualizations. Uh, you can build a, a lot of them. Like, just an example is I have a, I started an alternative uh, gallery for D3, and you have like over 1,300 uh, uh, examples. But they are mostly uh, standalone charts. So when you want to use them and integrate them to your application, you still, need, you still have a lot of work to do. Um, and I think finding the right API is a big part of, of this work. You also have a lot of resource for getting started. Um, in my last talk, 
sorry to always go back and forth between the web and my. So in my last talk, I tried to have kind of a list of the most basic uh, thing you you could um, you could uh, see to to learn uh, D three because you have some books, you have a good series of uh, videos, uh, you have some charts uh, packages, um, you have a lot of blog uh, uh, tutorials, you have the example uh, galleries, um, you have a lot of uh, gists, you have a lot of blogs. Uh, you have the Google Groups. So, uh, so here is a, a big list uh, of like the way to start for learning D3. But what's still missing is like when you are pretty good at at uh, uh, building charts, uh, you then have to be good at packaging charts and interacting, make them interactive with uh, interacting with your application. And that's the subject of this meetup today. So what do you want more uh, for integrating into application? Um, you want a, cons a consistent uh, API. So what, what I mean by this is only that you want kind of a, of a way to use your chart that will never change, even if you change the implementation. Uh, you want all of this to be uh, modular. You want all modules to be uh, uh, decoupled from each other. And you also want all of this to be uh, testable, because I think testing is really one of the most important thing when you build a, a real application. So uh, a consistent API is a kind of a public API that doesn't change. So the module can talk to uh, 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 each other. You can have a, a documentation that will try to never change. Um, even if you refactor very aggressively the implementation uh, hidden uh, under this API. Using a clear pattern is also um, something very important for having a consistent API. So the reusable API is not uh, probably the, the best uh, pattern for you. Like uh, some are, are more object oriented and they will see the re reusable API which is really uh, more functional than object oriented. And they will ask a question like, uh, okay, uh, how do I have a, a hierarchy of, uh, of, of my uh, modules? Like, um, uh, but that's, that's not the way it, it works. So, uh, but it's a very uh, specific pattern. That's the pattern that is used internally by uh, D3. That's a pattern that is used by many plugins, by ch many charts uh, libraries. So you could ask questions about it on the Google Groups and on Stack Overflow and you will have an answer. So that's also part of choosing a consistent API, even if you don't think it's the, it's the best API for, for your case. You can have a good API and not be uh, modular. Like the API, the API can be uh, consistent and you forget to um, uh, modularize. Uh, so modularity is very uh, important. I think everybody knows it if you are um, working with code. Uh, and by modular, I mean uh, uh, encapsulating the code. So what you want is a code that is uh, really well, um, that is uh, standalone, uh, and that is easy to compose. The reusable API is more for uh, composition than for uh, uh, hierarchies. So what you want is to have to build some uh, building blocks that, that you can just assemble. So what I like about this API is it's not just for building charts. It's not just like you, you have a standalone charts and you want to, uh, to, to package it. You may also want to package uh, components. By components, what I mean is, for example, the D3 SVG uh, axis is not a standalone chart. Like you don't do much with, with just an axis. But it uses the same uh, reusable API as like a, a, an NVD3 chart. So, um, and it's the same thing with uh, functions. You can have reusable functions, like uh, the D3 nest is really meant to be uh, reused, uh, but it's not a chart neither. You can have some uh, layout, you can have some generators, like the line uh, generators. Um, so what I like about this API is you are building, you are uh, building like a collection of building blocks, and then you will assemble them 
to, to, uh, to, to build charts, and you will assemble these charts to build your, your applications. Probably for assembling multiple charts together, you will use an MVC or an MV something uh, framework. So that will be probably um, the talk of um, my geeky colleagues. By decoupled, um, you can be modularized. You can have very uh, well encapsulated charts, but that are not uh, decoupled. So. What I mean by this is a chart should just know about its inner uh, behavior and states and never have to know about another module. So I think um, that's uh, something we all know, but that's important to, to understand that there is a clear uh, distinction between uh, having a consistent API, uh, having a modular API, and having an API that is well uh, uh, decoupled from, from the other. So you just expose the functions uh, that you want to be uh, uh, public, and you expose the uh, 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 events also. Uh, so no modules will have any kind of knowledge about the, uh, the other modules. Let's take an example. Here is a bar chart, and I think it's a it's a very simple bar chart by, by Mike Bostock. It's, it's using uh, the axis. It's using, of course, a scale. Um, it's loading some data. And then it's just using like the, uh, the update and, and the not even uh, uh, transitions. Uh, uh, so that's a very uh, simple one. Uh, most of the examples you will find on the web will be like this, what I call uh, standalone charts. They work well just for, for presenting the concept, but now you want to take this and copy paste this code and bring this into your application. And one way of doing it is to encapsulate it in the reusable chart. Here is a, maybe a more complete example and, and uh, uh, package in the reusable API. I will not go into too much details because I don't want to, to step on, uh, on other toes. But the first thing is uh, getting into a, a namespace. I like to uh, have a namespace under the, the D3 namespace. So then I have a D3 custom bar chart. Um, to have a module, the, f the f most easy way to do it is to just have a function. Because when you have a function, you have a scope. And uh, so that's the best way to, to, uh, to uh, package a chart. The reusable API uh, is interesting because you have this scope, you have this function that will just give you this other function. And that's the other function you will use. So the module is just like a way to, to generate and to give you this, this function here. So what you can see here, if you are into uh, JavaScript, is you can have some functions that are stuck in the closure. So what, what it means in, in, in a basic way is this function here will have access to it. But you will not have access to it from the uh, outside. So um, what is to understand with this is only that it acts like private, uh, private uh, methods and uh, variables. So you have some kinds of private and public functions which is not a concept that is too uh, JavaScript, but that every like, uh, Java uh, developer uh, knows. So uh, how do you get access to this? It's through the uh, API. So when I talk, when I say API, that's, that's exactly what I mean. It's every chart kind of publish, expose a, uh, some, some functions. So uh, here to set the width, you don't set it here di uh, directly. You, you use getters and setters. So this will be available from the outside. Uh, this is a function. So when I pass no argument to this function, it will return the value of width. If you pass an argument to the function, it will, it will give it, like it will set it to width. So that's one first thing that is interesting with this API. Every getter is also a setter. So if you pass uh, no uh, uh, argument to the function, 
it will, it will just like send you the, the, uh, the value. And that's the same thing with, uh, with R that you want to expose. So th that's the way to just say, OK, I have a bunch of uh, functions. I have a bunch of, uh, of uh, variables. But what I really want to expose is just this. Because I want to be able to, to change this. So that's the, maybe the most basic part of the reusable API. Uh, the result of, of uh, uh, features that are also interesting about it, um, just one that I will mention here is you can also expose um, some uh, events. So um, using D3 uh, dispatch, and I will not go into too much details, but you can just say, OK, I will expose this thing. And it's called a custom uh, hover. Then, then I will call it here on mouse over. And then I just re uh, rebind it so it's accessible from the outside. So I will not go into too much details, because you can find all the details in the books. You can find also in some, uh, in some uh, uh, tutorials. But the only thing to uh, remember is when you package your chart, you just decide what will, what will be uh, private and what will be public. And what I call the API is all what is public. That's what you can uh, document. That's kind of a contract that you can give to other modules to be able to, to interact with yours. So one first thing that you can see is that's not a lot uh, less code than the standalone chart. So the big advantage is when you have multiple charts, you just have one code uh, somewhere and you don't care about it because you just uh, use it. The way to use it is just like this. You have your, your bar chart, so then you just call this function. That's the module function that will give you back the export function that is really the one with all the configurations in it. So now you have a bar chart. And then you can use the getters and setters. So here you use it as a setter. You say, OK, width, I want it to be uh, 400. That's it. So you have a function that is uh, configurable. And then you, you use it the D3 way. So you just like uh, select the, the body, and then you pass your data set, and then you call it. This call thing, you, you use it when you use uh, access. So that's the exact uh, same thing. The D3 SVG access is probably the best example of, reusable, of the reusable API. So you can t take this as a template and try to take your standalone chart and make it fit in it. And basically, that's, that's what you, uh, you get like the, the most close to the to what can be the reusable API. OK, so am I going too, too fast? No. I don't think so. Because what I think is everybody is even geekier than me here. So that's perfect. Um, there is a lot of things you, you can do with it. I will just name uh, one uh, that, is, that I don't see often. And I see a lot of D3 examples because I try to, uh, to uh, collect them all in the uh, gallery. And I don't see often just the side effect that you can have a small uh, multiples for free. Like, look, you have a, a data set which is just an array of arrays. You, you select all the divs, but you don't have any, uh, any divs, so you just have like an empty uh, selection. Then you, you bind your data set to it. Then you, you, uh, you, uh, you append your div. So now you will just have one div because you just have one uh, array. Then you rebind the data. You use this little trick that you uh, uh, all know if you are a bit into uh, uh, D3. So this will rebind this level of the array. So it will call three bar chart, one with this data set, one with this one, and one with this one. So that's, that's an interesting part, because now when you want three bar charts, you just, uh, you just say, OK, I give you this uh, data set, and there is three uh, uh, arrays in it. And you will just have uh, three bar charts for free. 
So the, the neat trick is in this part of the code that is often uh, uh, forgot, uh, forgotten. It's that in your exports function, you receive the selection. And the first thing you do is you loop through, uh, you loop through each of them. So that's why when you, when you pass a, 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 a selection with, with like three things in it, it will loop and it will build them. So in the book, I tried, we tried to go uh, with, with a lot of like little tricks like this that are part of the reusable API, but that doesn't seem to be so uh, popular. OK. Having a modular API, a testable, a, um, what I like about it is it's easy to test. Uh, like uh, here, I'm, I'm just like uh, testing something that is not very uh, useful, but it's just for showing that when you, you use it with no uh, uh, argument, it's a getter. And when you use it with an argument, it's a, it's a setter. That's it. But you can do more interesting things for, for testing it. And D3 is not always easy to test because graphical stuff is never really easy to test. Um, so you can use some browser automation, you can use some automatic uh, uh, screenshot tools, but when, when you just want to, uh, to test the uh, API, uh, you, can, you can use, uh, for example, spies to test the behavior. So here I use Jasmine, and there is a spy that is uh, built in. So what I do is, um, so, I just like, uh, um, yeah. So I just instanti instantiate a callback. Then I pass it to, to my bar chart. Uh, we saw that my bar chart has exposed an event that is called a custom hover. So then the callback is, is the spy. So when I will trigger it, I can see if the callback has been called. So that's one way to just test the uh, API. So one neat trick that I didn't know until uh, recently is you can trigger the events directly in D3 because they are exposed. Exactly like the data that you bind to, a, uh, to an, a, an element is available in the DOM, you also have every custom events that are exposed in the DOM. So that's a couple of neat tricks that are also in the book because it's always a bit hard to test the behavior of a module. So just to wrap up, um, integrating D3 chart in an application is always a bit hard because you can find a lot of D3 uh, examples, <coughs> but that's, that's not enough. So you need a very consistent API. The reusable API is one that is already used in D3, so that's probably easy to learn because you already have a very good example for it. But it's, um, it's important to remember that it's not the only one. Uh, like uh, DCJS uh, and especially Rickshaw doesn't use it at all, and it uses another pattern that is really interesting also, uh, Dexchart, uh, uh, Xchart. So there is a lot of D3 charts package that doesn't use a reusable API. So that's just uh, up to you. In the book, uh, you will be able to see like, just like what is the, the reusable API. And I have a complete uh, test suite for it. Because I feel the, the test suite is the best documentation you can have because it, it's really listing exactly the contract and how to use it and what is uh, expected from this contract. So I have a complete test suite for this bar chart plugin. Uh, you have a complete uh, example of an application that is using uh, maps, that is using a cross filter. Um, so I think uh, we go into like every maybe a, a corner of the uh, reusable API with this book. And that's it. Was it fast enough? Yeah. <laughs>